Mm. Well, I'm the channel, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morris from Theology. Everything about a relationship comes down to value. It really does come down to value. And where you're going to place the value of the relationship in your life without losing your identity. As soon as you start to lose your identity in a relationship, you're going into a dangerous place. The more you lose your identity in a relationship, the harder it is for you to unweave your way back out of the situation. If you end up in a catastrophe, relationship catastrophe, a lot of people, you won't know when you meet them, but they self-prophesy the end of the relationship. So it's just a matter of time before they start to deteriorate. They'll go through the limerence stage, honeymoon stage, where they'll perform well. It's all built on the sinful nature. They perform well in the limerence stage because there's an element of starvation of masculinity or feminine supply. In other words, if somebody's not many people talk about this part but if if you are in a relationship and the other person's being tempted outside the relationship to go into an affair or something and a lot of people will because they don't know how to resolve anymore If you're performing correctly and your sexuality is in order with that person, because a lot of people do have an affair, have a, that do have affairs, it is not sexual orientated. It's not a sexual problem. The problem is unresolved. Nine times out of ten, it's unresolved because your partner will jump the fence if you've experienced this. They're starting to talk to somebody else. Reason being is they haven't got the maturity to fix the problem that they're dealing with. The best way to deal with it is to remove themselves from the situation in which she or he is being forced to deal with the problem. They'll sabotage the resolve by sabotaging the relationship and reaching out to somebody else that hasn't had all the responsibilities and journey that they've shared with you. People that do this, um, the grass is never greener on the other side. They, they suffer from severe mental uh, health issues because they're betraying themselves. They're walking in the dark. They're standing in the shadows. They're not what they portrayed themselves to be. Another thing you've also got to understand is when you trigger or ignite the sexual activity in a person's life and it's good supply, this can also send them aloof. This can also send them strain um, in their lust outside the relationship. You're opening doorways and passageways of lust that people, for the most part, don't know how to navigate and therefore there's another sabotaging factor they stray they are lit up 
they're sexually lit up and vulnerable and vulnerability always leads to some element of trouble particularly if there's unresolved these people these infantile people they do not want to resolve one of the most glorious attributes of a relationship viewers is when somebody wants to resolve a problem for the benefit of the, each other and the relationship. When you're with somebody that doesn't want to benefit the relationship by resolve, you're with somebody that's going to end up causing you chaos, trouble and heartache if you let them. You should be protecting your heart the whole time. You can love someone and protect your heart. So there's different pathways that open up in the desire realm that will want to be fed. If the person doesn't know how to navigate those, they can often ruin things by getting into an affair. Also, if you're dealing with people on drugs and alcohol and things like this, whilst they don't usually perform as well as a normal person, they will have a higher sex drive which also can cause them to be devious, deceitful um, and do things behind their partner's back which you'll never know about unless you've got your senses about you. Promiscuous, careless, reckless. What a lot of people don't realise is drugs is always followed by darkness. Morality levels change. Um, selfish levels change. All the, all the things change with drugs. You can kid yourself and think they're not, but they are. And ultimately this can lead to ruin as well. It will lead to the user's ruin, but it can contribute to yours if you let them. Um, too many options today for people. It's hard to find someone that's going to be honest and straight about things. Um, there's a lot of negligence out there. Personal negligence will often be a reflection of inner negligence, which means if you can look at the person on the outside and usually size up where things will possibly end up because you want to look to the future. You don't want to just be bouncing around in the present. A lot of people don't do these these day, do this these days, and one of the things that will happen is future faking. It's a narcissistic trait where they say to you things like, "Our future is together." I knew God sent you to me. Um, you were always the one. I knew as soon as I seen you. And this future faking can also be a warning sign that this person will fade out as the relationship goes on. With casual relationships or relationships that are developing, you'll find that there's elements of insecurity where we are trying to associate ourselves with the person and the other person with us. Some of these people will be all in for the sex and then drop away for the other parts of the relationship. You need to be aware of these ones because you're just an accommodation for their passions and desires, partners that isolate themselves from you and cause boundaries around you, you need to leave immediately, they have other agendas that don't include you, and if you're in any situation where your mental health is starting to suffer um, because of the inability of these people that you meet not to be able to function properly in a relationship, you need to be able to terminate that relationship straight away. If you're 12 months, well, I'm going to say three months into a relationship and things aren't calibrating the right way, then I would suggest that you need to let that person go and set yourself free from what's going to be a future of disappointment and sadness. My 
daughter's dog. Most ships aren't easy, they take work, they're worth it if you're prepared to do the work, but they're not worth it if you're in with someone that's just going to be mucking you around. And you have to be lethal, you have to be uh, resilient, and you have to be able to not lose your identity or take their identity and be able to back out accordingly. We're now going to turn to Professor Sam Backman's No Contact Rules. I have permission from Professor Sam Backman to be able to use his material. So, this is what you need to do if you're in a no-contact situation. Refuse all contact. Okay, so if you've split up with somebody and they're not contacting you, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to. Be sure to maintain as much contact with your abuser as the courts, counsellors, mediators, guardians or law enforcement officials mandate. Do not contravene the decisions of the system. Work from the inside to change judgments, evaluations or rulings, uh, but never rebel against them or ignore them. You will only turn the system against you and your interests. But with the exception of the minimal mandated by the courts, to decline any and all congratulants contact with the narcissist or with the person. Do not respond to his pleading or her, he is he or she, romantic, nostalgic, flattering or threatening email messages or gestures. Return all gifts they send you. Refuse them entry to your premises. Do not even respond to the intercom. Do not talk to them on the phone. Hang up the minute you hear their voice while making clear to them in a single polite but firm sentence that you are determined not to talk to them. Do not answer their letters. Do not visit them on special occasions or in emergencies. Do not respond to questions, requests or pleas forwarded to you through third parties. Disconnect from third parties whom you know are spying on you at, his, at their behest. Do not discuss um, them to your children. Do not gossip about them. Do not ask them for anything, even if you are in dire need. When you are forced to meet them, do not discuss your personal affairs or, or his. Relegate inevitable any inevitable contact with them when, a, when and where possible to professionals, your lawyer or accountant. Insist on your boundaries. Resist abuse. Refuse to accept abusive behavior. Demand responsibly predictable and rational actions and reactions. Insist on respect for your boundaries, predilections, preferences and priorities. Demand a just and proportional treatment, reject or ignore unjust and capricious behavior. Never show your abuser that you are afraid of them. Do not negotiate with bullies. They are insatiable. Do not succumb to blackmail. If things get rough, disengage, involve law enforcement officers, friends and colleagues, or threaten them legally. Do not keep your abuser secret. Secrecy is the abuser's weapon. Right, listen, do not keep your abuse a secret. Secrecy is your abuser's weapon. Okay? Never give him a second chance or give them a second chance. React with your full arsenal to the first transgression. Be guarded. Don't be too forthcoming in a first or casual meeting. Gather intelligence. Be yourself. Don't misinterpret your wishes, boundaries, preferences, priorities, and red lines. Do not behave inconsistently. Do not go back on your word. Be firm and resolute. Stay away from such quagmires. Scrutinize every offer and suggestion, no matter how inconscious, innocuous. Prepare backup plans. Keep others informed of your whereabouts and appraised of your situation. Be vigilant and doubting. Do not be gullible and suggestible. Be better safe than sorry. Often the abuser proxies are unaware of their role. Expose him. Inform them. Demonstrate to them how they are being abused, misused and planned and plain used by the abuser. Trap your abuser. Treat him as he treats you. Involve others. Bring it into the open. Nothing like sunshine to disinfest abuse. And I should have done that in my last relationships.